I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Pavel Baines, the CEO of Bluezell. Pavel, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hey, Ashton. Glad we can connect. I mean, we met a couple of years ago and, uh, you know, fast forward, here we are chatting together. So this is excellent. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, you know, blockchain industry has grown a, quite a bit since we first met, and I know Bluezell is doing a lot of cool things, and you seem to be continuing to grow. So let's just kick off the interview by hearing a little bit about Bluezell, and what is Bluezell, and how exactly are you changing the way that people share and store their data? Yeah, so Bluezell, at its heart, it's a decentralized data storage network. And what that we mean is that we believe that Web3 is coming and everybody talks about blockchain, cryptocurrencies, but Web3 is also going to be a full decentralized internet, meaning that, you know, all our applications should, should be just more secure, more private. So mm -hmm. how Bluezell came about was we were, it was about three years ago, we we're doing projects for some of the banks and insurers in Singapore. And we built a smart contract system on Ethereum, like know your, know your customer identity system and an insurance platform. But when we were trying to connect like the user data, you know, through Ethereum mm -hmm. um, to a database, we're like, well, we're still keeping it on a centralized database. And that's really hard. And it's not giving a full decentralized application. Mm -hmm. So that's when we realized that, hey, if this stuff's really going to work, the entire infrastructure needs to be decentralized. And people were working on file storage. And we decided, hey, the database area is missing. Mm -hmm. And that's where we focused is to give a database that's completely decentralized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very cool project. And I know you've been working on it for more than a few years and you have a base in Singapore which is a great place for tech innovations and uh, I'm curious with your guys' operations uh, have you been affected by the pandemic quite a bit and have you been able to survive through the, you know, the crypto winners and the barriers that startups normally face? Yeah so I mean crypto is interesting in the sense that crypto, it works at a different pace and it's everything's so unknown. I mean, you know, the stuff, it's mm -hmm. the industry is so nascent and R&D and is, as much as big as we think it is, it's still very tiny, it's still exploratory. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, you're not at that typical startup level, you're still experimenting. So I would say 2019 was definitely, for most people still in it, like a trying year to get through, build your stuff, survive, keep mentally sane. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think everybody who's in it still is super strong in the head. Mm -hmm. um, and then going back to, uh, COVID, like, you know, that broke out. Fortunately for a lot of crypto companies, everybody works decentralized and remote anyway. Mm -hmm. So it didn't take that much of a hit uh, in terms of operations wise. Um, so we were still in a good groove. And I think coming out of it, uh, uh, I mean, it's great for crypto and blockchain because one, mm -hmm. I mean, you guys know all the, the money printing that's happening around the world. Mm -hmm. It's furthering the case for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and moving money around faster, cheaper. And then the other thing that relates to us is more, now people are worried about privacy, will mm -hmm. governments, you know, just like Patriot Act after 9-11, they're like, hey, there's a lot of invasion of privacy things mm -hmm. that were allowed by government. Now COVID-19 is gonna allow for that. And so people are gonna be more interested about security, privacy, and there'll be a need for decentralized applications, hence a need for decentralized infrastructure like Zell. Definitely, yeah. And we seem to be moving towards that direction each you know, a little bit more every day. And in terms of the actual storage of the data, a lot of people just store all their files on iCloud or Google Drive or Dropbox. And there's so many centralized platforms where you can store essentially on the cloud or, you know, on their computers. Um, but now with this decentralized storage platform, can you talk about, you know, for people that just store their photos on iCloud or Google Drive or regular user files, is this something that's going to be a better solution overall moving to a Bluezell like platform? Definitely. So uh, the big difference in decentralized storage, so you got two areas. You got file storage, which would be like Dropbox, mm -hmm. uh, iCloud, Google Drive. Then you got data storage, which would be, uh, I mean, many people don't know, like AWS, DynamoDB, mm -hmm. Oracle, everybody knows MongoDB. Yeah. So what we, we play the role in the data side, and then there's other companies out there doing mm -hmm. file storage, okay. such as Filecoin. So they're too complementary. Yeah. And they're, anybody who's building an application, they need to store their files, and they need to store their data. Mm -hmm. um, now, in terms of, for the average person to understand, it is a, a much stronger system because right now, I mean, last week, if you saw, a lot of the internet applications went down because mm -hmm. Cloudflare which is a CDN for a lot of applications, 
they went down. And because they're centralized, you have a single point of failure. Now you yeah. can get access to a lot of applications. Now, if you're decentralized, like file storage or data storage, what mm-hmm. happens is all your data is stored, replicated and stored on multiples of networks or nodes. So even if one thing went down, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. You've got like eight other backups automatically everywhere else. So your data or your file is always available and never going to be down. And then also because it's powered by the blockchain, both of them, uh, Bluezell is, any changes, let's just say Ashton, you, you know, for FinTech News, you mm-hmm. guys produced some data, email lists, all of a sudden, um, you'll always have access to it because the data will always be available. Because if one thing went down, it's like, no, you'll just keep going because it's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And only decentralized networks can do that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the other point was, yeah, the changing. So if you change the data because the blockchain behind that powers us, mm-hmm. it assures that you're the only one who changed that data. Mm. Um, that means that it's tamper proof and no one else can change it other than being authorized by you and the entire network agrees that Ashton's the rightful owner. Mm-hmm. They made the data change and let's store it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's funny that you mentioned about the Cloudflare. I was just thinking about that. You know, a lot of the services in the United States went down for, I think it was only about an hour, but still with the internet going down uh, and knowing that that could happen at any time, you're really relying on those centralized providers to just you know trust that they're going to stay up. Um, that's really interesting moving forward, you know, with globalization and, and blockchain industries, they're always running 24 seven. So if it's, if you're running in Asia during the work time and, and something goes down overnight somewhere else, uh, that's not obviously going to be very good for your business. Um, but I guess one part about, you know, the infrastructure platform, having AWS, Cloudflare, and having these companies that manage, you know, the solutions for you, uh, with people that are looking to share their data using Bluezell is it, are there technical barriers to entry? You know, is it harder because it's decentralized and there's more technical, you know, barriers to entry, or is it just as easy? Well, that's a good thing about Bluezell is is designed that any application, whether they're a blockchain powered application like Adapt, decentralized, or just a traditional application, they can use Bluezell, and it works just as easy as what they're used to. And the reason is is that. Um, you know, the programming languages we support are Python, Ruby, JavaScript, mm-hmm. uh, Node.js. So th- that's what developers are used to. Mm-hmm. And technically, you know, we're not a blockchain. We just use the blockchain mm-hmm. to secure the network. So they use a database just like what they use anything else with. Yeah. Okay. And I read that the Bluezell net, you know, the network is in its test phase and it's going to be coming out sometime later this year. Can you talk about, do you know when it's coming out and you know what does that mean for the network when it launches? Yeah, right now, so we just finished in April uh, to end of July, end of June was our testnet phase. It's a test testnet. And so we called that Swarm of Duty um, because what Bluezell is, all the nodes that run that everything decentralized, they're swarms. Mm-hmm. So that's what we called instead of Call of Duty, Swarm of Duty. Um, and awesome success to that. We had over 40 projects be built on it. Wow. Um, our validators, which are nodes that secure the network, we had more than 200 come out uh, for a competition. And that was probably one of the highest turnouts for a test net. Wow. And it really allowed us to solidify the network. And now over the next basically, you know, 45 days, we're just firming the dates, we'll move to the main net. Mm-hmm. and allow for people to stake on the network and earn rewards mm-hmm. and be a mainnet, so commercial-ready product. Mm-hmm. So uh, probably in the next week, we will be uh, announcing those dates. That's great. Well, all the best moving forward with that. And you mentioned staking. I was reading into the consensus of this delegated proof-of-stake network, and staking and, and val- validating, becoming a validator in the network seems to be something that's really in right now. Can you talk about, you know, why is that an advantage or why did you choose to have this staking on top of the data sharing? Yeah, it's a critical part. So how, for people in general, how Bluezell works is like, it's like Airbnb of databases. What we're saying is, hey, you're, you're at home, you've got a computer, you're not using all that data store, all that, mm-hmm. you know, terabytes of data that's on there. Once you just basically offer it on our network, we'll find somebody who will use that and you'll get paid for it. So it would be the equivalent of if somebody is uh, staking would be the equivalent of, let's say you're putting up your place for Airbnb, you put up some money on there up front so that, you know, Airbnb, when the client comes, everything checks out, you're keeping up to keep. It's not a pigsty, Mm -hmm. you know, it's dirty. So that way, you know, you're incentivized to keep it up in a nice manner. So, you know, you get that money. If you don't, 
then at least Airbnb would be like, hey, we're taking some of that money, uh, that deposit that you put down, your stake on your Airbnb apartment. Mm-hmm. We're keeping that because we have to give that back to the customer. Okay. So in, in Buzel's case, it's, hey, if you're going to be a node and you're going to provide storage and secure a network, you have to stake by giving some tokens, okay. uh, Bluezell tokens, and depending on the proportion you put in, you'll get more rewards out. Mm-hmm. And hey, if your network's down all the time or it's not keeping up to speed, mm-hmm. we can slash that and basically take those tokens away. Oh, well, that's really interesting. So there's positive incentives in helping keep the network healthy, and I'm sure that will help with the growth of the network as well. So that's really cool. And I was also reading about the infrastructure that you're partnering with the Cosmos blockchain, you know, and in the beginning, back when we first started and Cosmos wasn't really launched yet, they were just doing their token sale. Um, and, you know, Ethereum seemed like the go-to blockchain, but now, you know, that Cosmos blockchain is out and it seems to have a lot of interoperability and special functionality. Can you talk about the decision to use the Cosmos blockchain and why it's the best for Bluezell? Yeah, there are two reasons. So one is when we're building out Bluezell, we're building our own consensus engine, which is, you know, consensus is to secure that any changes to the data or run the nodes are done in consensus and everybody agrees it's decentralized. Uh, we're starting to have certain troubles because that's probably not our best forte. Mm-hmm. Um, and then late last fall, around November, you know, Cosmos, Tendermint, they were up and running, it was showing good strength. We're like, you know what, that's, Tendermint is the best consensus engine out there. Mm-hmm. Let's just focus on the database, getting the customers, doing what we do best, and let the consensus engine be run by Tendermint, which is the best one there why why spend our resources on it yeah um that was that was really good so that saved us a lot of time and energy and the other thing with cosmos is what you touch on cosmos is designed to be interoperable Mm -hmm. uh, so that all blockchains talk to each other hey we don't know if there'll be one blockchain to rule Mm -hmm. them all or there'll be many that need to talk and for different applications so by cosmos figure uh, focusing on that and us being powered by cosmos like our own Mm -hmm. luzel net what that allows is that us to talk to any other blockchain that connects Mm -hmm. to cosmos so whether it's Ethereum, um, you know, finance chain, mm-hmm. um, EOS, whoever, as long as they connect to uh, Cosmos, an inter-blockchain communication protocol, they're automatically be able to use Bluezell. So what that opens us up is instead of us just focusing on each blockchain at one time, we can connect to one and then be usable by anyone. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And I think that will be a key moving forward because you just never know with a single isolated blockchain that isn't interoperable and, you know, you're sort of at the mercy of whatever that protocol, you know, changes that may be made in the future. And you obviously want to have that interoperability moving forward because you never know what happens. So um, that's, I think that's a great choice. Now we're running out of time and we talked a little bit about, you know, the mainnet launch, but I'm curious in terms of the future for Bluezell, you know, the mainnet's coming pretty soon. Uh, do you have any future plans and releases and updates that are coming, you know, within the next six to 12 months that are going to be huge after the mainnet? I think, I mean, this is crypto. So much changes if you plan out six to 12 months. <laughs> uh, we like to go on three, we like to go on three month cycles. So I think going to mainnet is a big thing. We've got yeah. a lot of, Great partnerships uh, established that we'll we'll be announcing between now and the mainnet phase. Some really good projects out there that'll prove out how Bluezog gets used. And the other one is, uh, I mean, the bre- breakout area in blockchain crypto now is open finance, decentralized mm-hmm. finance. Yeah, and we see that's going to move more towards traditional finance platforms in terms of data analytics and usability and uh, certain price information. Mm-hmm. So we do have a DeFi. Uh, use case mm-hmm. solution that we're building right now uh, that we planned out like probably six months ago. Mm-hmm. And now because the mainnet's coming, we're like, okay, this is the area, the space is growing up big. So we'll have a DeFi product solution uh, based on Blue Bell ready. Very cool. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and if there are viewers that are looking to follow along for the mainnet release or just learn more about Blue Zell in general, what's the best way for them to learn more and get involved? Um, the three areas are uh, our Telegram channel keeps everything up to date. So that's at uh, Bluezell if you're on Telegram. Uh, there's an announcement channel at Bluezell A-N-N. And then our Twitter feed is always putting out uh, the latest news. So uh, anything that we come up or uh, that is going to be coming up, we put it on there. And that's mm-hmm. at Bluezell HQ. Great. Well, thank you so much. I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. That's all the time that we have for the interview, Pavel. But I really appreciate you coming on. All the best with the Bluezell mainnet launch upcoming. And let's follow up in the near future. Thanks, Ashton.